This is 5-Minute Power Platform, and today we're going to talk about how to send Power Automate approvals to the members of an Office 365 groups or group or more than one group. Uh, and so just let me show you how this is set up here. So I've got the simple SharePoint list that we're going to use as the basis for this, right? So we'll just do first. And then I'm gonna, I can, I've got this person and group column, so I can put in a person or I can put in a group. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that all the members of all the groups, so it could be more than one, or all the people specified get an approval. For this one, I'm going to be using this group that I made up. It's got three members and one owner. And just know that we can't iterate the owner, so that if you're an owner but not a member, you wouldn't get an approval. So make sure that you add yourself to both. All right, let's just start here with an automatic flow triggering off of SharePoint. Call this Approve to Groups. It's going to trigger when a new item is created. So I'll select my list. And then next we're going to create a variable that we're going to use for storing our approvers. The approvals action takes a semicolon list, a semicolon separated list of email addresses. And so we'll just initialize a new variable. We'll call this approval list and a string. And then next we're going to start iterating through the approvers. And so we'll use this control. We'll do an apply to each. And we'll just get, go through the approver list that we get back from SharePoint. So you'll notice when we get the approvers back from SharePoint, they're going to look like this. This top one is a user and the bottom one is a group. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look for this claims identifier, this prefix. And if we have this claims identifier starting off the string, then we know that it's a person and we're going to treat it as such. If otherwise, if we don't have that, we're going to treat it as a group and we're going to use the groups connector to iterate through it. So we'll start by, uh, we're going to use a compose block just to make it a little easier to type that condition. And so we'll start with a compose block. And we're going to use starts with. And then what we're looking for is the approver claims. Let's just search for claims. And then we're looking to see if it starts with, and I'm just going to copy this string over here, that prefix that we saw in the previous slide. And so that'll be true. If it starts with that, that means it's a person. And if it doesn't start that, it means it's a group. And so then we'll use a condition based upon what we just did there. And we'll say, uh, so if the compose that we did above, the output is equal to true, then it's a person. And all we're going to do is we're going to append their email address to our, uh, to our variable. And so we'll add to our approval list variable. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the SharePoint email in this case, because this is the approver email, is going to be a person. Now these are semicolon delimited strings, so we're going to put a semicolon after the approval e approver email. And then over here we're going to look up the group. Now if we go back here, what we need is the group ID, which is this last 36 characters of the string. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use another compose to get just that last 36 characters. So we'll bring a compose over here. Now what we'd really want is a, a write function. We don't have one of those in Power Automate, so we're going to try to approximate it. We're going to use the skip function. And so the skip expression, what it's going to do is we're going to go and say, okay, well tell us about the approver claims, which is here. So skip forward in that string, but how far? Well, each one could be a different length. And so what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 36 from the total length of the approver claims. And then that means we'll skip forward an amount that is everything but that last 36 characters, and that will get us then the team ID or the group ID. And so then what we'll do is we'll pull in the groups action. And we're going to list group members. The group ID is going to be a custom one because we, uh, we just found it. So it's going to be what came out of Compose 2 right above us. This one here. 
And then what we'll do is then we're going to do the same thing that we did over here. We're going to iterate through and add in the email addresses and semicolon delimit them. And so to do that, we'll do an apply to each. We'll iterate on the group members and then we'll append to that variable. Mail, we have to make sure we semicolon delimit it. All right, so now let's save this. I've noticed sometimes the semicolons disappear, so I'm just checking here to make sure those things actually stay put, because they are important for us. And then the next step then is we're going to, we're going to put in a, just like a little debug step. We're going to use another compose just so we can kind of inspect our string that we just built. And then we'll send it out to approvals. We're going to do start and wait for an approval. We're going to do the simple one, approve, reject. Only first to respond, right? Because these groups could be large. We don't want everyone to have to respond. But we want someone in this designated group of list of users and groups. And we're just going to keep this really simple because this isn't really about using the approver connect, approval connector. Title, uh, assign to, so this is our variable that we've been working so hard to build, the approval list, and we'll just put in a link back into SharePoint. So that's pretty easy to do. And then the last step then is we're gonna update SharePoint with the decision. So we'll do SharePoint, update item. And we'll choose our site, our list, the ID here, there it is. The title is required too, so we'll just add in the title back in from when this row was uh, when the, this was triggered up here. And then now we're down to the parts we care about. So who actually approved this? What did they say? And what was the final approval decision? And so we're going to enter this as a custom value here. Now we've got the responses approver user principal name. Now we chose the option up here first to respond, so we know there's only going to be a single response. But because technically the approvals connector could do many, when we add this user principal name here, it's going to add an apply to each to our SharePoint. But we know that apply to each is only going to run once. So now let's add in the comments. Responses, comments. And finally the decision, which is the responses response. All right, so let's, uh, let's double check these semicolons one more time. Looking good. Oh, that one's gone now, put that back in. All right, so now let's run a test. I'll perform the trigger action. Come over here to SharePoint, do a new one. And then we'll put in a person, and we'll also put in our group. So it should be a total of four people receiving this. And I'm only in the group, so if I get this, it means it successfully went to the group. All right, so we see we've got our, our initialization there. Our apply to each ran twice, which is what we want. Uh, once for the user, and we appended the user there. And then the second run was for the group. We pulled the ID of the group off, listed the group members, and then iterated through the three members of the group, adding them with semicolons. And so because we added this compose, we can do a little debug here and say it looks like it looks right, it does look right. So now we should have an approval waiting for us over here. I'll come over here and do the approval. Say it works and then submit, and we should see then that flow close out. Update SharePoint. And if we come back here to SharePoint now, we should see it updated. And so we know of all the people we sent it to, including those groups, we know who actually did the approval, what they said, and what the approval decision was. So as a very quick overview of how to actually send approvals to groups or users and groups combined, I hope that was useful to you. Thanks for watching.